In order to grow, in order to learn, in order to not stay stagnant and stuck, it's important when life presents you with a challenge zone to step into it. Or maybe it's unavoidable, you can't help stepping into it. It just happens. And often that could be around death. You find out that you have a terminal illness or that someone very dear to you has a terminal illness. Or someone that's very dear to you has just died. Perhaps it was expected. Perhaps just one morning they were dead in the bed or they got hit by a car or something happened very unexpectedly and they were gone. And you just find yourself in the challenge zone. It's not comfortable. But then you could begin to look at it as this is where the learning takes place. This is where the growth takes place. The high risk zone is sometimes you have to step back because once you're in the high risk zone, which simply means that you aren't ready for it yet. Then learning doesn't happen because it's too much for you at this particular time in your life. Too much. So personally, and I, I, I don't feel there's anything wrong with the comfort zone. And it's so comfortable, secure, you know. You can relax. The problem is when you make it a way of life. Honestly, most of us have it in the front of our head or the back of our head, but somewhere in our mind that if we could just do everything right, we could stay in the comfort zone forever. And that would be called the good life. But the problem is, if you just opt, even though it's an interesting experiment in ignorance, that the human species tries to stay in the comfort zone permanently, and no one has ever even come close to achieving it. But somehow you just think that's because you, you made a wrong move, or you didn't understand well enough, or you blew it somehow. So the problem is that if you opt for comfort zone as a way of life, which is to say that when inevitably, always, the challenges come, but you run from them, you hide from them, you drink or smoke or would do different things to try to get away from it, and you don't take the challenge zone as learning. So you don't have that view of it as good fortune, difficult, not easy, but powerful and transformative. It's where the real growth happens. Whereas comfort zone is your need to relax. You need to be able to relax, but it's changing our attitude towards the challenge zone changing our attitude towards the challenge zone as precious, necessary, important. Because otherwise, the comfort zone begins to shrink and less and less things bring us comfort and more and more things seem like a challenge. On the other hand, if when the challenges come, which they come every single day in little ways and bigger ways, when they come, if you take them as learning, it's just an attitude really, you know. It doesn't make it any more comfortable. It's not like, oh, this is a way to smooth it out and then it won't be unsettling. No, it's still unsettling, but you have a view of it as something where the learning happens, where the growth happens. And if you take the challenges that way, and allow them to transform you, which they will, then the comfort zone begins to expand. And what used to be challenging becomes comfortable. 
you take the challenge, I guess you could say, knowing that it's also the learning zone. And then your relaxation begins to expand. And your curiosity begins to expand. Your sense of being alive begins to expand. What's problematic about trying to stay in the comfort zone all the time and what's transformative about taking the challenge, living in the challenge, being worthy, changing your attitude, reframing your attitude towards the challenge. So somehow you try to find your balance, maybe go all the way into the comfort zone just to somehow find the ability to relax. So could it be that by how you live your life now, you could actually relax with impermanence and you could relax when your own death comes, you could relax. And the key to relaxation is familiarity. When you're really familiar with something, you can relax, even if it's uncomfortable. And I think that's the challenge that I'm presenting and starting with impermanence and these gaps when nothing is actually, where there's no ground, just open space. Open space feels very refreshing for a little bit. But then when the space keeps going and going and you begin to try to hold on to something and there's nothing to hold on to, it becomes unnerving. You can't really escape, right? And that's the good news.